So I have to do some work on my background worker services. So I'll take this opportunity to talk about this. Let's quickly go over what they are, what they can do, then how I use them. And finally, I'll guide you through my code, my setup for my background workers. The worker services are commonly used to offload some work, work that either takes longer or requires more resources. Or just, to, just work that doesn't have to or cannot happen right away. Doesn't have to would be, for example, a user does a request to your API, then some work has to be done but you don't want your user to wait for that work to be done, so you offload that to your background worker service. I mainly use this for the last reason described on the documentation, and that is a time-based operation. So my background worker services are usually running once every 24 hours to do some data fetching, synchronization of data, or even some web scraping. Web scraping we can talk about in the next video. Collecting a lot of data from external APIs, from external data sources, can take some time. Uh, web scraping as well is uh, pretty intensive and can take some time as well. We don't, I usually put those, those types of work in a background worker service and then I deploy those to Azure where they can just keep running to an Azure app service. Note, if you do that, make sure your app service has the always on option on. This is needed because an app service that does not receive any requests for some time, I think it's about 10 minutes, will go into some kind of sleep mode. Once in sleep mode, it will not be executing whatever task you want it to execute. There is no trigger to wake it up. So keep that in mind. My videos are packed with valuable advice like the advice I just gave you. So make sure to like the video and subscribe to my channel to stay well informed. A background worker service can just be added to your solution. Similarly, like the other types of projects, you go to new project and select the worker service. The reason I give my worker a specific name is because you can have multiple hosted services in one worker project. Let me show you. For example, in the program CS of the Pet Adopt Worker project, you can see a Spotlights Worker and a Scraper Worker. Those are two hosted services. The Spotlight Worker runs every five minutes and the Scraper Worker does some web scraping every 24 hours. The Spotlight Lights Worker reads some messages from the Azure service bus every five minutes, if there are any, of course. The reason I split these, because the first reason would be they have a different time interval. So one runs every 24 hours, the other every five minutes. And yeah, just logical separation. It's completely different work with different requirements, dependencies. And another reason would be these worker services don't have any exception handling built in. So the tiniest exception could crash the whole thing. So that way by splitting those, we can have some more control and do some better exception handling. Let's not waste too much time on that. Just know you can do it and that's why I built it like that.
So, I have a workers folder, then the services folder where the actual logic will be, the actual task. Then I have the models folder that's usually for some data models representing the output of some external API, for example, the Google Calendar API, to just map the responses. Then the interfaces speaks for itself to interface these services. And the database helper, let's have a look to do some database operations. And then lastly, the configuration folder, which will hold the configuration that gets extracted from the app settings. So a configuration class that will be bound at startup that extracts the necessary data to run the Google services. What I just mentioned is of course not too different from a normal web API project or any or most of the other .NET projects. Let's take a look at the program CS and you'll see a host create default builder and host run async. In between the configure services we have the host context and the services will just register all our services or dependencies. So that would look like this. I add the dependencies, the database, blob storage, and the Google services libraries, class libraries. Then I like to add an HTTP client because most of the times I do some, I call some external APIs over HTTP or I do some web scraping, for example, which might also require HTTP stuff. Then I bind my configuration, so my app settings configuration as classes to the services. And then what follows is my logic, so my actual logic. And lastly, the ad host service of the Google worker. Let's do you want to see this configuration? It's not that unusual. It's just Google config, which properties will I extract from the app settings uh, to use in my logic to connect to the Google APIs, for example. And then the Google worker config is more the general one to um, configure the delay in hours. So the time interval where I want to run the worker will be 24 hours in our case. Let's take a look at the Google Worker. This is similar as the worker.cs you would get from scaffolding a new worker project. It inherits the background service. Then I inject dependencies like the configuration, the services that I'll be accessing later on service provider to access our database and then you get to execute a sync coming from the background service and the delay in milliseconds is just what I set and then use in the await task delay at the bottom depending on how many hours I want to w make it wait while not stopping a, a cancellation requested that's what you get out of the box uh, so it will be running until it stopped then i create a scope to treat every run cycle as a request cycle uh, if you paid attention in the program cs most of the things are registered as singleton as the as that is sufficient but it was required to create a scope to get the database service to get the database from the services and then I use this database helper to just to check 
has the uh, worker run recently so imagine it's running every hour and I only want it to execute every 24 hours then I just do a simple check did it already run within 24 hours we just skip the work we don't do anything and then I do the actual so if it hasn't run yet I do the actual work and repeat Like I mentioned before, I wrap most of the things in a try catch because, yeah, I mentioned it, these worker services are pretty fragile and you don't want the tiniest exception to crash everything. So better be safe than sorry. Then I created some interfaces to make it a bit more generic. Uh, where I specify run worker service, I pass along the DB context, the worker type and an iService implementation, which is going to be the worker service, the actual, that actually does the work. That's an extra layer I added to, yeah, not have to repeat myself for every worker service. Let me show you. Then I have the actual iGoogle Calendar service interface with which will be implemented by the service that actually does the work. But we in, yeah, implement the iService here, which is just a simple run method. Why I made this extra interface, first to be more specific, second so I could add more implementations of the iService so let's say I have a Google Calendar service and then I have a Google Map service uh, I can't do I can't inject them both under iService for example like this if I were to do this and then duplicate that for another service like the map service that wouldn't work also that would mean I'd have to do something like this I service and then for two different services that will not work so that's why I made some extra services uh, interfaces so then this Google Calendar service is doing the actual work and the run method sync event it's getting some meetups from the Google Calendar API. Then all that is left is to show this worker service, which is an extra service I added to lessen the having to repeat myself. Uh, worker service. And this worker service is just a wrapper around the actual work with another try catch and the point of this code is to when something unexpected happens, some yeah, exception happens, write the failure state to the database when it went all successful, write a success state to the database. And that way I can also know, like, did the worker already run in the last 24 hours and was it successful? If it wasn't successful, try again. And it's then going to add in the exception stack trace and message so I can dive into why it failed. So now I could easily, if there was another another service doing some work, I can easily just copy that and add in the whatever service in here. And then the same logic will apply if it's, if it's successful, it will be written as a success state to the database if it fails. 
I'll write it to the database as well with the exception details. That is my implementation of the worker services. All I now have to do, of course, is to fill in my app settings to have the correct Google configuration information, uh, deploy them, them to Azure, and I would like to add Serilog. Serilog is uh, the structured logging we set up in a previous video series. Check that out if you're interested. About this code, if you're interested in this code, I can leave it on my Patreon. There's always a link in my channel. Let's... So keep it simple, stupid. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. I am going to make at least a hundred videos in the upcoming time the upcoming period so there's a link to my patreon the patreon contains a lot of freebies for now the serial log to verify by uh, email authentication smtp mailers and all good well crafted projects so i'll add the worker there if you like this video speaks for itself like the video and subscribe and let's get to a hundred videos see you in the next video